Hi everyone, my name is Idris Kempf and I am a DPhil student from the Department of Engineering Science at the University of Oxford. In this video, I will present my paper entitled Multi-Array Electron Beam Stabilization Using Block Circuit Transformation and Generalized Singular Value Decomposition, or short GSVD. In this talk, I will focus on the GSVD. Before diving into the maths, let me briefly introduce the system for which I am designing a controller. This is Diamond Light Source, the UK's national synchrotron facility. You will notice the tiny cars in the foreground. This oval shaped ring has a circumference of more than half a kilometer. Diamond Light Source accelerates electrons and has been up and running since 2007. An imminent upgrade of the synchrotron, Diamond 2, requires designing a new electron beam stabilization controller. What's the purpose of the synchrotron and why does it need such a controller? These are the schematics of diamond light source. The electrons are first accelerated in the linear accelerator, then in the booster, before they enter the storage ring. As they circulate around the storage ring close to the speed of light, they emit the so-called synchrotron light, which is channeled into the beam lines, where it is used as a light source for various kinds of microscopic experiments. In order to guarantee the quality of these experiments, it is of utmost importance that the trajectory error of the electrons is minimized. That is why the so-called fast orbit feedback system is used, which controls a large number of magnets to reduce the trajectory error of the electrons down to nanometers. As a novelty, the Diamond II upgrade will introduce two different types of corrector magnets, slow and fast magnets, whereas for Diamond I, all magnets had identical dynamics. Today's talk will tackle the difficulties introduced by these additional dynamics. These are the discrete time input-output dynamics of our system, where Y represents the beam displacement in either horizontal or vertical direction, US and UF the input currents to the slow and fast corrector magnets, and D the disturbances, which I will drop on the following slides to simplify the notation. The dynamics of the actuators are captured by the scalar transfer functions Gs and Gf. The effect of the magnetic fields onto the beam displacements is captured by the orbit response matrices Rs and Rf, and because the electrons travel close to the speed of light, it can be assumed that the change in a magnetic field has an immediate effect onto the electron trajectory. Such a system where the temporal component Gs and Gf can be separated from the spatial component, Rs and Rf, is usually referred to as a cross-directional system. We assume that Rs is square, Rf rectangular, and that both matrices have full column rank. A widely used approach for cross-directional systems is to diagonalize the system, yielding a collection of multiple input single output systems. The same approach is used for Diamond 1 which features a single array of actuators with identical dynamics. By factorizing Rs using a singular value decomposition, and by left multiplying the input-output dynamics with US transposed and defining the so-called modal variables US transposed Y and VS transposed U, one obtains a collection of single input, single output systems for which a controller can be designed using CISO methods. Diamond 2 now introduces this additional array of fast actuators. If you use the same approach used for Diamond 1, it becomes obvious that this will not yield a diagonal system unless Rs and Rf have an identical set of left singular vectors. We will diagonalize the system using another technique instead, called the generalized singular value decomposition. The GSVD is a general matrix result and concerned with the simultaneous decomposition of two matrices, A and B, that have an equal number of columns. The matrices UA and UB are orthogonal, SA and SB are diagonal, and the matrix X is invertible. For the particle accelerator system, the matrices RS and RF have an equal number of rows. We can therefore transpose the GSVD result and use it to diagonalize our cross-directional system with two arrays of actuators. In its transposed version, the GSVD has the common matrix on the left-hand side of the decomposition. In essence, the GSVD chooses a common basis for the images 
of the matrices Rs and Rf, which is given by the columns of X. It identifies output directions which are common to both matrices. These directions are weighted by the diagonal matrices SS and SF. The matrices US and UF are orthogonal and map the original vector into the generalized mode space. With the assumptions made earlier, the output space basis X is always invertible. The columns of X span the images of RS and RF, and in contrast to the SVD, where the matrix of left singular vectors is orthogonal, the matrix X is not. The generalized singular values also play a different role than the singular values in the context of an SVD. For the SVD, the singular values have the notion of an amplification in the direction of the singular vectors, which have unit length and are orthogonal. Here, the amplification is contained in the columns of X, and the values of the matrices SS and SF are positive, but smaller than one, and the sum of the squared matrices adds up to identity. They measure the relative significance of vector Xi in each of the matrices. If the generalized singular values are equal, then both matrices contribute equally to the output direction. For our electron beam stabilization problem, the GSVD will tell us which output directions can be controlled by slow and fast actuators, and which ones can only be controlled by slow actuators. The immediate benefit is that we can use the GSVD to diagonalize our system. By inserting the factorizations of RS and RF, defining the transformed variables using the tilde notation, we end up with the system at the bottom, which is diagonal. The MIMO system has now been mapped to a set of two input single output systems and another set of CISO systems. We will use this diagonalized system to de design a controller. For the feedback system, we choose the internal model control structure. The GSVD is included in this diagram, where we use the inverse of X to map the feedback term into the generalized mode space, and the matrices US and UF to map the computed inputs back into the original space. In practice, we are careful with inverting the matrix X, because the synchrotron represents a strongly directional system, and we use a regularized inverse instead. I will now briefly elaborate on how we design the TESO controllers before presenting some performance figures. For the controllers of the two input single output systems, we use a mid-ranging approach. This approach is well suited for the case that our actuators have different bandwidths with a limited actuation range. For mid-ranging control, one first chooses an overall complementary sensitivity function T, which defines the overall bandwidth the TESO system will cover. Second, one chooses TS for the slow actuators that is adapted to their bandwidth. Third, one computes the difference between T and TS. The controllers for the slow actuators are obtained from dividing TS by the slow actuator dynamics GS, which yields the green curve. The controllers for the fast actuators are obtained from dividing the difference between T and TS by the fast actuator dynamics GF, which yields the red curve. Using this approach, the overall transfer function T is split between slow and fast actuators. The slow actuators take over the low frequencies, while the fast actuators take over the higher frequencies. The result of this control approach is visualized on this slide with a magnitude plot of the power spectra of each actuator over the frequency range from 0 to 700 Hz. In order to see into which frequencies each actuator invests most of its effort, each row of the plot is normalized by its maximum amplitude. It can be seen that the slow actuators mainly act on frequencies below 50 Hz, while the fast actuators barely contribute to these frequencies and exhibit actuation up to 500 Hz. This figure can be compared to a hypothetical system that uses the same total number of actuators but for which all actuators have identical bandwidths. Using the same sensitivity function as before, we see that in the hypothetical case, the actuators would be required to produce significant control effort over a much wider frequency range. In practice, such a magnet would be much more difficult to build and more expensive. Finally, we can take a glimpse at the purpose of this control system, the disturbance attenuation. 
The figure shows the magnitude of the Fourier transform beam displacement. The blue line shows the beam displacement without orbit feedback control, and the red line shows the beam displacement with our control approach, which matches the control performance of the hypothetical system. With that said, I am coming to an end. In this presentation, we saw how to use the generalized singular value decomposition for the purpose of diagonalizing a cross-directional system. This diagonalization enabled us to synthesize a controller using methods from two input single output controller synthesis. The mid-ranging control approach allowed us to split the actuator effort among slow and fast actuators. Our ongoing research includes examining practical aspects of the control system that uses the GSVD, such as the robustness of the controllers, which is of particular relevance for diamond light source. In addition to that, we are also investigating the use of the higher order generalized singular value decomposition for cross-directional systems with more than two actuator arrays. I would like to thank you for your attention and for watching the video. See you at the next, hopefully not virtual, CDC in 2021.